Memoir writing is one of the most transformative types of writing because of the self-reflection it requires. Marion Latad. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. The genre that we're going to cover today when it comes to marketing is very connected to our last one, but it's the other side of the coin. They are very different, even though they are both technically nonfiction. Today, we are talking about memoirs and how to market a memoir. Generally, if you're not already famous, not a lot of people are going to read your memoir. So marketing is very difficult. You have to know what you're doing and you have to know why people are going to come to you before you can really get good traction with your memoir. I'm also going to shoehorn in some of the biography, some of the other narrative nonfiction that you might have. It all shares the same target audience. So we're mostly this episode going to say memoir, but we mean all of these other types of things. The hardest thing about memoirs is connecting with your audience, knowing who your audience is. So if you are answering a question they had, or if they are a fan of this other thing that you are also covering in your story somehow. When it comes to who is going to be interested in your story, overall, if they're interested in a memoir of a particular topic that they like or a biography or some narrative nonfiction, they are older generations. These are going to be solidly your boomers and some of your older Gen Xs. In general, younger people are not fans of the narrative nonfiction because one, it's boring and two, it feels too much like homework. You will get some people who are part of book clubs or enjoy these top 10 bestsellers on this or that list who listen to NPR, those kinds of people. But they also fall into this boomer late Gen X category where they're looking back on life and wanting to feel like it was worth it. Now, if you do have younger people reading memoirs or biographies, it is because that memoir or biography is from a particular person that they are interested in. So you have Spare by Prince Harry. A lot of people were very interested in his story, especially after his separation from the royal family. You have I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, who was a very well-known Nickelodeon star. And she talked about a lot of the trauma that she experienced being a child star. So you have these things that a younger generation, like millennials especially, we followed these stories, we followed these people. So now that they're releasing memoirs, people in the millennial generation are interested in those because they were big celebrity people. They are not so interested in reading memoirs about some random grandma. I love random grandmas. They are usually very kind. I don't always want to read their stories. So when you are talking about the particular contents of your book and making it marketable, I feel like a lot of memoir authors don't know how to make sure they tell a story within their memoir. They just kind of go, here's one thing that happened to me and here's another thing that happened to me. Oh, and here's another thing. They aren't connecting the pieces, which makes the memoir probably the most difficult novel to write. And it's a lot of people's first novel as well. So those two make it extra difficult to market. But when you are talking about the contents of your book, the what, make sure you are telling a story within your book if you want it to be marketable and sell well after it's been read. In most cases, you need to pick a particular moment, a particular time of great trial and struggle and ultimately triumph. Most people don't need to know your entire childhood to get to the interesting bits. Another thing to keep in mind with the content is a lot of memoirs, the people who are reading them appreciate a content warning. The stories that you're telling often center around a particular trauma that you experienced. Making sure you're very clear about that in your marketing, that this is about having an abusive husband or whatever it is. And then keep in mind that also most memoirs, if you are having trouble figuring out a good time to start, 
a lot of memoirs are written around a well-known event. So living through World War II, living through the Soviet Union and the fall of the Berlin Wall, or something like that, these big major events people know about, and then giving them one person's perspective on it. This is why the diary of Anne Frank is a fairly popular World War II narrative nonfiction, because we get to see the experiences of World War II and the traumas in that area of the world through the eyes of somebody who experienced it. So we've talked about the content of the book, but the cover is at least as important in marketing it. So what do we need to know about the cover design of my memoir in order to make sure it sells? This largely depends on, again, the contents, especially the era that you are writing about. If you are writing a World War II, you're going to look at historical fonts, you're going to look at typewriter E or very sans serif. Really consider the story you are telling and what kind of visuals will best represent that. You're going to see a lot of pictures of the people on the cover who are centered to the story. So in the case of Prince Harry, it was just a single photo of him up close, no real decoration. I don't personally read a lot of memoir, but I know people who do. And I have purchased memoirs for other people (laughs) as gifts because they're interested in the money ball phase of the Oakland A's because they're baseball fans. The font alone will tell me who of my friends would love to have this as a Christmas present. As for the when to market these, you are going to have a spike in sales around early summer. These are the kind of books that people will bring on their summer vacations or in their book clubs over the summer where they may be trying to step outside their lives for a little bit or see life from a different perspective. The other peak that we'll see was one that I just referenced is when people start to do their Christmas shopping and they're buying them for other people that they know. If you start to ramp up that marketing in November, then by the time December really hits, your marketing momentum is in full swing and you can really ride that Christmas wave and get your book to people to give it as a gift to other people they know. Where you are going to market this book your stronger element is going to be your in-person marketing. Connect with people in person because if they see you, if they meet you, they are far more likely to be interested in your story than they are going to be if they have no idea who you are. If it's not a memoir human specific story, if it's based on a collection of events that we all know and love, You're going to look for fans of those events more than you're going to look for readers of books. If you find events that center around baseball, then there will be readers in that particular group. And those are the people who are going to come back to you as opposed to marketing to readers and hoping that one of them also likes baseball. So whatever your secondary topic is, lean into that if you can. And then, of course, your friends, your family, they are going to be a very big connection for you, especially if you're writing a memoir, unless you're writing a memoir that kind of casts them in a bad light. But if you are writing about a personal story of yours where you went through and triumphed in a trial and they want to cheer you on, they are going to talk about it with their friends. They're going to spread the word. They're going to be a big help for you in the marketing process in person. Online is a lot more difficult. There is so much anonymity and people don't trust a lot of what they see online. There's this mentality of no one on the internet knows anything. So why would I care about your story? Everyone's trying to be heard in the online space, which is a very difficult place to sell your memoir, especially if they don't know you as a human being. If you're 100% devoted to online marketing, find people who are leaders, especially thought leaders in this community, and lean on them. Have them endorse your book, have them arc read your book, so that you can say, hey, this person who you also know, this celebrity, I'm not a celebrity, but they are, and they said they love the book. See, it's right there on the back cover. For example, a lot of the people who I have seen or who have contacted us that are interested in writing memoirs are interested in writing a memoir for some kind of religious aspect of their lives. So their online would be to go to pastors or people within that religion 
that have a presence that can help them spread the word outside of their own congregation. Now we're looking at the most important part, the why. Why are people reading memoirs at all? And in particular, why are they reading a memoir about some random person? When people read memoirs, they are doing it to feel more cultured. They are doing it to learn about experiences outside of their own. This is why they're really popular for vacation reads and book clubs, because they want to be seen reading a memoir, (laughs) because it makes them feel like a more well-rounded person, because they are invested in someone else besides themselves. They could also be looking for stories similar to their own. They could be looking for a story that helps them feel not so alone in the world. These slice-of-life memoirs that tell about a childhood trauma that readers can then read, experience, and understand and connect with because they went through something similar. They're also, like we mentioned earlier, often given as gifts. I know my daughter wants to be a scientist. Here is a book on being a female scientist and what that is like from so-and-so's point of view. When it comes to writing memoirs, these are books that literally no one but you can write. No one can write your story the way that you will write your story. And that's the wonderful thing about a memoir. Everyone has a story. Everyone has something in their life that they could write about if they really wanted to dig into it. And only you can write yours. So when you do, be fearless and write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 